Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Hi, I'm Hewell Hauser. You know, one of the exciting things about living here in Southern California is that our entire area is literally filled with artists, people who are doing very exciting and interesting work. And on this particular adventure, we're going to visit, we're going to meet two of those artists and see firsthand the artwork that they're producing. If we don't get run over first, we're standing here right now in the middle of the brewery. This literally used to be a beer brewery down here in the middle of Los Angeles. And I'm standing with Guillermo Burt. Now, we met originally at a uh, open house that they had here at the brewery. This place is filled with all kinds of artists. All of these are lofts, artist lofts up here. And I was down here on a Sunday afternoon, came into your studio and saw your work. And uh, you're going to be one of the guys that we're going to be uh, visiting with today because your work is a little unusual, isn't it? Well, uh, you can call it that way. I mean, it's just uh, my work, that's all. <laughs> Spoken like a true artiste. <laughs> so what we're going to do, actually, before we go into your studio here, we've got to go somewhere else to get the raw materials for your work, right? Absolutely. Uh, my work is called, uh, my new series actually, is called L.A. Sites. L.A. So, Sites. Exactly. And, uh, you know, it, it has a lot to do with uh, where I found my materials, how I get them, and stuff like that. So I think that uh, it's very important that, you know, we go to one of these sites and, and, and show you how, you know. How you get the stuff before uh -huh. you start to work on exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so we're off. Where are we going? Uh, we're going to downtown L.A., and uh, right around Broadway is where I get it. Okay, mm -hmm. we're off to downtown L.A. We'll head off down this way, get into the car, and uh, get started on this art project. All right, sounds exciting. <laughs> well, through the magic of television, here we are on almost the corner of 4th and Broadway. And why have you brought us here to this spot? Well, this is one of my favorite, favorite sites. I mean, I get a lot of stuff from here. So, I mean, I'll show you how I get it and, and stuff like that. All right, so, I'm ready. I'm curious. <laughs> All right. Well, these uh, posters here is, well, you know, I mean, what's, what's happening is that they, uh, like a weekly, in a weekly basis, they are filling with new fresh posters right on top of each other. Uh -huh. So they're creating all these layers, you know, different layers of information, basically. Of you posters, know? one on top of another. Right, and they kind of rotate like uh, with such a speed that you create these like 30 layers underneath, sort of like, to me, they're like um, some kind of archeological dig. You know, you, you find stuff that are varied for, you know, for a brief period of time. Well, let's dig. All right, let's, let's, <laughs> let's get it out. So you're putting on your gloves. Oh, okay, here's what you're talking about. Look right. at this. I mean, you see there, I mean, how, you know, all the different layers are being, so you, you know, pull it buried. Off? And you just pull it off, basically. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at all of these layers here. So what you see is like, you know, different information being, you know, it's, it's like a collage thing. So you just keep pulling off? Can we pull we off are. here? Well, you can, you can. Now, well, does really it make any difference whether it's a big piece like that or a little piece like that? Yeah, I mean, you're lucky you can pull the entire wall off in one occasion. But is this legal, Guillermo? I never, I don't know. I, don't I know. think it's legal. I hope it's I, legal. Yeah, I mean, this is like, uh, you know, I don't know if they have the right to paste posters in the street anyway, in the first place. So you're helping clean up. In a way, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, we got the material. All right. And so, um, I'm sure our viewers are very interested in what you're going to do with it. I have already seen what you're going to do with it because I saw this first at the open house. Right. And it intrigued me so much that, that I wanted to follow up and and do something on this. So we have the materials. We're at 4th and Broad, and we're on the way back a couple of miles to the brewery to Guillermo's studio to see exactly what he does with these layers and layers of stripped off posters from downtown. OK, we're now back in the brewery. This is Guillermo's studio. 
we got the materials here, and what happens first? Well, uh, I just uh, want to show you a little bit how the, I strip the paper so I can get the different layers, and then I start from uh, there uh, collaging them into, you know, like the canvases or... So it ends paint. up... Well, let's give people just a quick preview of some of the things you do. This is a work in progress here. Right. Uh, it seems like the whole thing developed into a language. I mean, the poster itself in the street, the way they peeled off and stuff, the way it showed different areas and how they repeat the color and everything is laid down in a certain way. So you have to kind of get familiar with it and start knowing the language. So when you put it back together, it seems like it's something that you it really was built and constructed by accident through the layering process. So these are bits of old posters that you've stripped down Absolutely. and then you have painted the these images right on, wrestlers on, on, right. on here. Yeah, but um, uh, the, the good thing about this material is that you, go, you can go back and forth. I mean, you paste stuff, paint it, and then you can peel them off right afterward. And then Wait a minute, you just peeled off part of your painting. <laughs> right, and you can just really get going and just get back what it was underneath. So I mean, it's a that, little that, bit of both. So that way, I mean, in, in, in any case, you need like some breathing space and some areas. You just dig in and just, you know, get it, you know? I mean, <laughs> instead of being one or know, the other. Right. And then you paint again, and then you keep on taking out and, and adding up. So, I mean, the material is something really great. You don't have to be worried about what, you know, you get dirt, you screw, you know, make screws and staple it. I mean, this is the best thing in the world to work in it. Let's show, Louis, look down here. Let's show these horses because these are absolutely beautiful. Come on down here and explain these horses because these are the two that I saw during the open house that are just spectacular. Well, uh, this, you know, the LA side started with my idea of what it was uh, like a cave art. Cave you know, art. Cave art from the, you know, industrialized world. Instead of being painted in a cave, we're painting scenes from the street. But the street is, you know, the images revolve so quickly that generate all this layering and stuff that I use as a base for my paintings. So this is advertising, you know, uh, rock and roll posters or <laughs> movies, whatever. And they are where I place these uh, uh, very primitive or basic images. Of a horse. Of, of horse. I mean, what was the, used to be the landscape like just a couple hundred years ago in California. Probably. And the next one I like because you left the horse's head off. Right. It's a kind of animal cruelty, as people say. But it's not really. I mean, to me, it's not like, uh, it's a fragment. You know, all these things are like things that are incomplete because when you turn them apart or through the passage of time, you know, supposedly, it, things are getting faded or just disappear. You know, and, and it's, you have to kind of reconstruct it yourself while you're thinking on it. I mean, like looking at it. Look down here, Louis. Now, here's one of your original ones, a buffalo with a little sheep. Right, or a little right. That's also uh, make the reference to the cave art. And also, it has a lot of stuff going on underneath. There's like some faces, you know, you can barely see underneath here. And there's uh, like a hand or numbers. And there's all sort of things that you can find through you know, the little things. And over here, this part of this horse, now this is all posters that you ripped off the, right, the right. walls. And then after you painted the horse, did you just make these, rip these holes out? Yeah. I mean, this is like, a, like the silence in music. And you need some breathing space, some open areas. So the space, the wine goes in and out. So that you, you can move the, the you know, the, the wow. composition. It work with this element precisely. The and shape, I love the jagged the rip, edges. Yeah. The jagged edges around here. This down here is a rhinoceros. Well, well this is from the cave, you know, from the cave uh, age itself. I mean, we have it around still, but then it's something that it could be painted. I mean, in fact, it was painted in some caves in a, in a different place of the world in, uh, uh, millions of years ago. And this so, is all just stripped down posters right. back here. Yeah, you see the border here, there's like 30 layers of poster underneath. There's so many well, things here's underneath. Your, here, are the, here are the bits and pieces over yeah. here. 
Yeah, this is the kind of thing that uh, I kind of get. And uh, so, would you just put this on the? I saw one over there. You would just put this up on the board. Yeah, to start I, with. Right. I, I kind of. I mean, this you have to understand that it has like the color and the main element of the composition. You you kind of select your palette, which is you know the color, and also the you know the main figures are kind of. I mean, like. Um, Characters that are going to be in the composition. See, this t to me is a sign of a true artist because you look at something like this, and you end up <laughs> with something like this. Explain this to us. Well, this is a new series that I'm uh, doing, which is part of the, the LA sites, but also it focuses more like in, in the gestures. Just you know, athletes or divers or uh, dancers that they are kind of expressing their their self, and it's being captured in a second, and it's being you know uh, processes the way that it's been it's something that's been done like uh, hundreds of years ago and been dated already through this, this, this aging is process. Spectacular. So the, the the process is sort of like given like the dimension of the time. You know, so you get, get to see contemporary, you know, like the present time in a more, you know, in kind of some kind of perspective. And you got one more back here that I particularly like. This one. This is just beautiful. So this is a whole series of movement. Here. Yeah, motion is, is the main key in, in these in this pieces. And all of this is done with the jagged edges where you've just ripped. Right painted over, ripped off again. Right. I mean, you know, some of the pieces that they're, you know, if we had like this one, it was a face there originally, and I just took it off. And I usually take all the heads and the faces off the paintings after I've done it. Because it's not about a psychological, you know, approach of, of, of the people that is being uh, performed, but uh, portrayed. But, um, it's more about the, the body, the action, the, you know, it's, it's like a human endeavor that you're trying to capture as emotion. This is more, beautiful. More than, um, than story, you know, I don't want to tell stories. I just want to capture like a second in, in life and, uh, and uh, you know, just show it with the dimension of time. So portray it in, the, in perspective. Now these are works in progress here? Well, these are, yeah, there's just uh, Can I some, hold this one up? Yeah. This is a horse. And again, this is just on this poster paper. Right. It's vertical, though, but it's just basically. Which way is it supposed to? <laughs> it's supposed to oh, be it's like, like that. that. <laughs> yeah, the horse is in there. Wow. That's still my favorite, and that's the first one I saw. That wonderful horse over there. You yeah. like that one? Yeah. I mean, they're all. Yeah. And this the... is your work in progress. Right. And this is really spectacular. Yeah. I think we're out of time. How do you, wait a minute, how do you put one of these up there? How do you get it? You were going to show us how you actually... Well, actually, uh, this, you know, I mean, this uh, sumo wrestler, you know, I really like the fact that how it worked with this chicken, that it really is a KCT uh, poster or something. You know, <laughs> I found somewhere. This, you know, everything is there in the street. So I, I, I think I'm going to have a bunch of these heads of chickens all around this sumo wrestler. So it's just a matter of pasting it here, you know, with a staple gun. And uh, that will basically stay and that will, you know, glue him and, uh, and you know, just make it even And more. all of this is in relation to the sumo wrestlers, which still in the middle of them have bits and pieces of what's left of the posters all incorporated as part of it. Right. And on top of this, I, I layer it with acrylics and all the resins and all sort of other materials. So it give uh, more sort of like a broken surfaces and uh, translucent. So it get deeper into the technical what was aspect this, of it. What was this art form called when you would collage, wasn't it? Or decoupage? Or what, what, was, what was the word? Well, it's, a, you... it's basically a collage. Collage. But, uh, you know, I'm painting on the collages. So it's not just the collage, but it's a you know, there's several techniques that I combine to create this, these pieces. Well, this is beautiful. We're out of time. This is spectacular nice. to think that something like this comes from something like this. 
This is what we, we took off the wall today. You know, and it's, it's real thick. It just goes on and on underneath here. I, I think it's really important that the pieces have the flavor of the street. So I never lose that quality. And that, that, I think that's what it's called LA Sites. LA Sites. And this has been our visit with Guillermo Burt here in the brewery. Good I'm glad we met. Absolutely. I'm going to put the, your telephone number on the screen here so that if people want to call and talk with you about I'm your order, great. find out more about it. It's a beautiful uh, studio down here. This is where he does all of his work. And this is very interesting, interesting work. Thank you for sharing it with us. And now we're going to go on to artist number two, who is very different. All right. His art is night and day from yours, but that's what makes art interesting, isn't it? Absolutely. You know. Thank you very much. It's great. Great to have you here. OK, now for the second part of our art adventure. We have come to the city of Pomona, and we're here in front of this wonderful old adobe, one of the oldest buildings in California. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. And we are here because of this letter that Ramona Riedel sent me. Right. And what was it you told me in this letter? I told you that I know of a very good friend of mine who's a wonderful painter. He's uh, 87 years old. Uh, I think he's a genius. Uh, I love him immensely. Uh, and she just said that on the first page. You should see what she said in the rest of the letter. In other words, you invited me to meet this artist yeah. who you said was one of the true classic artists in California. Right, right. He's one of the old artists. Um, from the old school. From the old school. And he's a marvelous man. What can I say? Well, I, well I, now uh, you have brought your art teacher yeah. from Citrus College, right. Chris Van Winkle. Right. Good nice afternoon. To nice to meet you. Tell us a little bit about the fellow that Ramona wants us to meet. And I guess you know him very well as yeah. well. And uh, this is his studio is in the back here. We'll be seeing it. Uh, he's uh, one of the original members of the California Watercolor School, uh, painted with uh, the likes of George Post, Rex Brandt, Millard Sheets, and he's still painting today. He's 87 years old. We'll go back there. He's working on a painting every day of his life. We think he's uh, a, a very unique, very original, uh, marvelous person for you to meet. Well, now this, this looks like just a little lean-to out here. <laughs> this is his camp? This is his camp. Uh, this is where he loves to work. Uh, Milford, can we interrupt you a minute? Good Milford. morning. Good afternoon. Well. Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, I, I recognize you. All right. <laughs> well, nice to see you, sir. Well, welcome to Jungle Camp. <laughs> Is that what you call this, Jungle Camp? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's outdoors anyway, and it's my working place. Show us what you're working on well, here. You may as well be clued in that I uh, I'm an artist with limited vision, and uh, this has been happening during the last few years. So I work from memory a great deal now. I've spent a lifetime looking, and now I have to think what I'm painting. And I'm remembering experiences in Asia during the war when I was a war artist. You were a war artist? I was one of the 42 official army artists who went overseas during the war. I painted in India and Burma and China. So and, this is something I, from Burma? Well, that would be the Burma Future River, possibly. But be careful, that, that might run on you a little bit there. It's wet watercolor. But uh, it's partly in process. And possibly I'll do two or three watercolors until I feel I have it in hand, and then I'll enlarge it into about a 30 for 40 paper. Wow. It's a. Uh, Can we see some of your other work here? Because you have well, it of course I have stacked. Some, I have some frame pictures. This is, I don't know how the camera picks up this. Here's an oil. You can photograph that pretty well, I expect. Mm -hmm. This is, I have worked in all mediums, but since the war, because I traveled and watercolor was expedient, I travel now and carry watercolor, so I've become a watercolorist by default. So well, now this is watercolors, is watercolors, isn't it? And this is, of course, this doesn't have a glass on it, so you can photograph that quite well. This, um, so I can uh, look at some of these other pictures if you like. Goodness, look uh, at all of this work you well, have. Well, here. 
I've painted all over the world. I, these are the Cliffs of Moher in County Clare, Ireland. I love to go to Ireland, and this is a, and then <laughs> when I painted this, <clears throat> some men were working outside. It was raining, as it always is in Ireland. And I heard a thumping, and I went out, and they were knocking the back of the old building I was sitting in, knocking it out with sledgehammers. And I said, hey, you're knocking my building down. And he said, ah, oh, you should have been here 100 years ago. <laughs> so, so really, all of these works that you have uh, well, are representative of your travels all over the world. Yes, let's see. That's California. This and is California. Let's this, put this is up on the Cambria coast. It's up near San, the sea near San Simeon. Now, the fact that this is done with watercolors yes. um, makes it makes you part of this school that Chris was telling me well, about. Well, yes. Uh, I feel that I'm well identified with the so-called California School of Painters. And when we say California School of Painters, it's good to identify that because uh, what it amounted to during the 30s, young, uh, young painters spearheaded by Millard Sheets, a very famous watercolorist uh, who, who's with us, uh, he and Phil Dyke, Phil Paradise, some of those early ones. I came along possibly as a second group. I studied with Millard. I was going to Pomona College. Millard came to teach his scripts. And, uh, and Tom Craig and I became identified. and. Then as the years went by, Rex Brandt developed and he became a key, a key person in it. So it, what it amounts to is a group of young painters uh, working apart from the Eastern painters, very much influenced by Mexico, very much influenced by our, our outdoor way of life. We developed a school of painting, I say we, and yes, we, I feel that way, I'm part of it. Uh, we developed a school of painting that identifies itself as opposed to the Eastern or English approach to watercolor very much uh, simply because out of doors, influenced by Mexico, the Western, California, the or West. Cal or California, definitely California. I just noticed something. I've got to bring this up. This is just a minor point. But on the back of this painting, this watercolor, you got another one. Yeah. Well, Gwendolyn, well, can we take a look? I've never seen that before. Well, what you use I'll, both sides I'll, of I'll the canvas? You, this paper costs eight or ten dollars a sheet. This is, <laughs> <laughs> and I come from Scotch and French ancestry. <laughs> so you use both sides. Well, when you come, French are the most stingy, and the Scotch are the next. <laughs> Now, is that, that's kind of unusual, isn't it? Yes, uh, I think we'll, we'll chip in and get him another sheet of paper. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my problem here is to start deepening these colors. I want to enrich that blue of the water. And so, and I think maybe I'll use my wide brush. Now, this is a very fine synthetic brush, and the advantage is that you can cut things sharp with it like a chisel, you see. I want to come right up to that that line and and here and I want to subdue that white a little bit and I'm taking advantage of my way of painting now has to be to keep my face pretty close to the paper and you have to live right because you have to keep your, your hand, hand has steady. to be steady and then of course in watercolor you have the wonderful advantage in being able to to blend the color and uh, and pull it together. Now, suppose I wanted to enrich that color while it's still wet. I could deepen my color and come back into it again, you see. Now, that's a little too much. I want a little neutralizing there because I want a little feeling of reflection of those trees over there, you see. The colors are so vibrant. Is that part of what he's so well known for? Yes, you notice they're very rich, glowing colors. They're very deep. Uh, he he paints with uh, a, a preliminary starting color, and then he adds colors into them, so he gets a glazing effect, a rich glow that uh, I haven't seen too many watercolors achieve. It's, uh, they, they sing for a long time after you've seen the scene. Oh, right? look at that. This is Monterosso, Italy. The uh, 
How long does it take you to do one of these? Well, the old stock answer to this is, it, it, speaking of watercolor, it takes 40 minutes and a, oh no, an hour and 40 years. <laughs> an hour and 40 years? Yeah. You can do a watercolor in an hour, but it takes 40 years background to do it. <laughs> yeah. I went uh, painting with this man in the, in the wilds of New Mexico, up on the hills, Canyon de Shea. He's the first one painting, the last one to finish. He, uh, no matter in the cold and the wind, he's the first one there in the rain. We can't get the man to stop. Uh, true inspiration. And uh, look at the work. It's this, You're nodding, uh, too. Well, he's taught me an awful lot. I'm an artist as well. Or a, I guess you could call me a younger artist. Mm -hmm. And hopefully he'll teach me everything I need to know. And maybe I'll be as famous as he is someday. <laughs> so you're still actively teaching. Oh, yes, of course. And I have a student in the, in the East. She's a great horsewoman. And she, she says, I don't mind people ask me if I ride. But she, she says, I resent it when they say, do you still ride? So I still paint. I still teach. I still do the same life I always did, as near as I possibly can. Well, thank you so much for visiting with us today oh, and met. sharing just, I mean, we could, this is just what you have out here in your camp. <laughs> you, you've done literally probably hundreds, thousands of these wonderful watercolors in your lifetime. One of my Utah ranch neighbors walked in one day and I had a stack of watercolors and I was working one. And he said, well, Mr. Zorn, painting another watercolor, you got a lot of them. <laughs> Let's meet yes, you, because yes, you've been my, his partner there. all these years. A, you've been on all these journeys around the world? Yes. Mm -hmm. What do and you do while he's he out painting? Travels a lot shop. Of stuff. You shop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like to travel. travel I've traveled with our daughter. Mm -hmm. She's the director of the Sacramento Zoo, so I travel a lot with her. Well, you're still traveling. Well, indeed. Well, we're going to Cuba yeah. next year. You're, you're going right. to Cuba you're, next year. You've got to keep track of Ramona, because she didn't she didn't confess. She didn't bring her guitar. She's a great folk she singer. Yeah. Well, this whole thing is turning into a love fest here. <laughs> yes. I think we better say goodbye. This yes. has been absolutely great. We have visited with two artists today. You didn't see the first part of the program. No. You will when you're home watching it. Great. But both of these artists are unique and wonderful in their own right. And this has been an absolute well, joy and delight to spend this time well, with Well, thank you. you very much. But there's one thing now. You're, you did this California Gold. This is one of the oldest ranch, ranch houses in California. Oh, I know. Right we here. talked about it yeah. out front. Oh, good. good. So we've gotten got this, we got all the scoop before <laughs> we met you. Oh, I'm good. I got it. Yeah. That's good. been it. Thank you very much. This has been a wonderful day. We've met two just outstanding California artists, just two of the many wonderful artists we have all over Los Angeles and Southern California. This has been a great day. Hopefully we've all learned a lot and our lives have all been enriched by what we've seen and by the people we've met. Thank you for inviting me to, this, to this little camp here. This is a heck of a camp, you guys. Well, the light is beautiful for what I do. <laughs> Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.